Welcome to our free online global seven day retreat, Rebirth of a New You, uh, Rebirth a New You. Um, the subject of rebirthing um, lately in the past couple of years has been very hot and uh, seems like it's a hot topic in the pseudo-spirituality. And um, let's put some light on what, is, what does it mean to rebirth and um, get more clear about it before we go forward. So this seven-day uh, retreat is going to be about that. And uh, it's going to be rebirthing. And rebirthing is nothing new. Uh, rebirthing does not belong to pseudo-spirituality of a trend that's been happening in past maybe five or ten years. It's been uh, in the ancient spiritual culture and the mysticism ever since the ever since. So all myst uh, mystic cultures, whether Egyptian or Persians, Hindus, um, Christians, the Jews, um, the Africans, they all have, and Native Americans, all the mysticism, the have been involved in rebirthing. So rebirthing is not something new and rebirthing is not that you do some breath work because a lot of people that these days I come across, they're associating a rebirthing workshop with breath work, which breath work is a part of it, but that's not rebirthing, okay? So let's become clear and put some light on what we're doing, why we're here, what's the purpose, and where are, where are we going to go to? What's the point? Why did we gather together and why is it we're doing what we're doing? Number one is rebirthing is heavily associated with death. So one has to become very comfortable with dying before rebirthing. So let's talk about that part, a part that culturally is a taboo and it's something that we're not supposed to talk about it's not for the kids, it's only for the adults to speak about, and it's always being spoken in a hush-hush way, and not in an open communication. The death of the organism is inedible, uh, inevitable. All appearances on the consciousness, anything that appears, on consciousness will disappear. It's got a period, a duration that is going to be here. It appears and it disappears. And it appears and it disappears. Each and every one of us here is an appearance. It's an expression of the absolute. It's an expression of God. Consciousness, which is the substratum of everything, and there is nothing outside of consciousness, is always here. And that's where you derive your intelligence and your presence from is from the totality of the being. Consciousness here, right now, 
as the only thing that there is. So it is the very background of everything. It is the fabric of everything. It is the air that you breathe. If you were not able to breathe, then you would die in a few moments. There won't be any life. Water, you can hang in there for a few days. Food, you can do for 20 days or longer. But air, it's a matter of a couple of minutes. And then life is over. So the what I would like to point out to and bring your attention to, so it becomes more clear understanding, is that there is the life force, which is here. And it's always been here. And it never goes anywhere. The presence, the being. So for one moment, just shift your attention to a very simple matter, simple equation, just by bringing our attention from one place and you shift your attention to another place. So in this shift that you're doing, you're going from a place that it has a source of an appearance that is eternal and it's important and it keeps going. Like your life. So for a moment, just take your attention from that place. How important your life is, your plans, your desires, your family, your spirituality, where you want to get to and do. And shift your attention into this place of Like you're looking at everything in your surrounding as if you have no definition for it. If you're looking at a TV screen, you're looking at a stereo, you're looking at me, you're fooling around with your cat, you're, whatever you're doing. Don't have a definition for it for a moment. It's simply Look at something or whatever you're engaged with without a definition. Don't define it. For example, if I'm going to look at my cell phone, I look at it as an object without analyzing it. What is it? It's simply an object, but if I have no previous memory from the past, I have no idea what this is. It's simply an object. And what differentiates this from this other remote? This is a remote control for air conditioning. So if I'm looking at them innocently, I absolutely have no idea what they are. And I have no definition for it and if my understanding or mental or my mind is primitive it's a primitive mind then it definitely cannot figure any of these things out it simply looks at it as if they're just objects so what i'm saying is that initially for us to understand, this is what I'm trying to relay and share with, with you regarding the concept 
and the idea of rebirthing is that the idea of your life, of whatever it is and how important it is to you versus shifting into a perspective of not knowing and indifference. And in that shift, rebirthing happens, you have born again, just like that, because you have shifted from a perspective of ideas, concepts, time, duration, space, what's important, politics, geography, countries, economies, your relationship, how important it is, your love, your finances, everything, from shifting into a different perspective, you're still the observer, nothing has changed. The presence remains the presence. Consciousness is still here. But all of a sudden, something shift. Something of the old, which has all these definitions, dissolves into an unknown of a new paradigm of not knowing, but not knowing and not associated with fear, worry, because fear, worry, anxiety is all coming from the past and being projected into the future. Because there's no future, future doesn't exist. There's no such a thing as future. There's no such a thing as a future. So understanding rebirthing and understanding be entering into this paradigm requires there's a requirement to it it's not just some breath work workshop that one does And you're doing the work, you're doing the work, da, 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 da. you do some intention settings, da, 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 and you get really high from it, or you cry, or you feel the da, 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 da. But then you slide back into your old ways again, and you continue being who you were with all your problems, or worries, or fears, or anything. Everything comes with it. So that's not rebirthing. It's sort of like a mental ejaculation. You did a workshop. It was great. You did a rebirthing workshop, but nothing happened. You're back into who you were. Rebirthing, so it requires you the willingness of to die first. We can't do it unless you're willing to die. Are you willing to die? You have to you ask yourself that question. Do you have the guts? Can you go into your death?
what would it be like if you died? What would it be like if you died prematurely, it's a way of saying it, without you ever fulfilling any of your desires? Or all these desires are left and are not complete and you died before accomplishing it. Are you okay with that? Can you handle that? Because you can't do a rebirthing unless you're willing to die first. So how are you gonna be born again? And in that, it takes a certain type of determination courage, willingness, and sacrifice. Because maybe in the death of you and rebirth of you, you leave out a part of your personality or desire or who you think you are or you were behind. Maybe that, that's what happened. Can you handle it? Are you willing to take the chance? Are you willing to sacrifice? So why don't we take a couple of moments, okay, and kind of sit with ourselves and see if you're willing to do that. If you're willing to part ways with a part of you that may disappear. Now, that part of you most likely is going to be a part of you that is no longer serving you. And it's not doing you any good. But we're hanging on to it because it's comfortable, it's familiar, we know it, part of us sometimes wish it wasn't there, but a part of us is very much identified to it. Strong identification with it. So in this work, and those of you who've been with me and we've been together on this journey so far, it's always I make it very clear or relay this message is the entire levels of your consciousness or where you add in your life, it's always a perspective. It's always a shift of having the capability, the ability and the willingness and the maturity of wanting to shift and bringing your attention from what appears to be real, but is changing to that which doesn't change and is here. And that takes a, a certain kind of willingness 
and spiritual maturity because ordinarily we're just like, oh yeah, or let me just do this and another and then I'm, I'm going to just like, let me finish up um, after I finish this and after I do that and after I take this trip and after I remodel my apartment and after I get my blah, 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 after this, after that, blah, 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 then I'm willing to pay attention. But in the meantime, I do some spiritual work on the side. But it's like a child doing it. It's like a kid. It's not really committed. It's just doing it because it's trendy or it's cool or it's a part of the things we do during the day. And this is another thing we do. But you're not really committed. You're not really focused on it. So it doesn't really work. But it just gives you a couple hours of comfort. For a few hours, you're okay. You feel good. You feel good you're a part of a community. You feel good you're kind of connecting or whatever. But it doesn't really take you home because you're not really focused on it. It requires your attention. Not really doing, 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 doing things. It requires attention. It's like your partner or your child or your business or your plans. You have to pay attention to them. Otherwise they fall apart. It's like you're in a relationship with somebody. You have to pay attention to them. You can't ignore them. You got kids, you have to pay attention to them. You have to. Or they're angry with you and they say, fuck you. Or they just go do all kinds of crazy things. You got finances, managing finances, you have to pay attention. You have to be on top of it. You can't fall asleep. You've got a garden, you're taking care of garden. You have to pay attention to it. You have to water it. You have to make sure there's not all kinds of things happen. You have to pay attention. Same thing here. You have to pay attention. And what do we pay attention to? And it's really, really simple. And you've heard it before. It's nothing new. There's nothing I'm telling you which is new. There's nothing, no teaching is nothing that has never been said before. It's all have been said and done a million times before throughout the history by different teachers and masters and awakened beings and people who are seekers and dedicated to the truth. And where you pay attention to is here, right now. Paying attention, shifting your attention from a story that you believe and it's been constructed called your life, which is extremely fragile and at any moment it can stop and end and be altered at any moment in any way, but it's very, very important to you. 
and you're very invested in it. Two, shifting your attention, maybe looking in the mirror, looking into your own eyes, and all of a sudden, without any stories of any kind, no stories, you recognize the vastness of the being. You recognize yourself. in a most ordinary way that we are sitting in the living room, air conditioning, heater, computer, our drink, our coffee, everything is there. Nothing really spiritual about it. You're not wearing your feathers and spiritual clothing. But in that very moment, the most spiritual thing will happen beyond anything else is the moment of the death of who you think you are and all your ideas, everything, to a complete unconditional undescribable moment available to you of being present here. Completely unceremonial, like there's no big bang or nothing and sky doesn't open and Christ doesn't show up or Moses doesn't come and open up the ocean and you walk through it. Nothing like that. It could be, but it's just like here, diving into being comfortable here in your body, The willingness of dissolving into this moment and being okay with being here right now. With all the stuff that it has, good stuff or bad stuff or whatever it is, whether it's matching your idea or it doesn't. And it's free and there's nothing you have to do about it because it's already here and it's been here ever since the ever since. It's been waiting for you. It's always waiting for you to recognize it. It's very simple. I invite you to do it with me right now. Simply, Look on what's one side and see you, the old you, and all your stories, everything that has happened to you, and including being traumatized, being abandoned, being beat, being raped, being left out, being screwed over, everything that has happened in your life, plus the good things, all the wonderful things that have happened, including your personality, addictions, all your addictions, which you know very well they are and what they are, your secret thoughts, desires, everything. Everything is here. And you're identifying with it, which is fine. Don't beat yourself up, it's okay. You're perfectly fine the way you are, by the way. 
And then there is a moment of clarity of recognition somehow of shifting your attention, okay? Attention. You take your attention from here and you bring your attention to here. And I'm just making a physical thing to it is that all of a sudden in this place, you're still here, your body's the same, nothing's really changed, same temperature, same everything environment, blah, 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 blah. with the difference is you have no idea of anything, zero idea. And check it out, what do you have to lose? You can always go back and pick up your old self if you like. Don't worry about it. Don't be afraid. You're not going to lose your mind. If you do, that would be wonderful. But simply shift your attention to here, right now, in this moment, which is completely fresh. It's the only moment that exists. Because the last moment is gone, all previous moments are gone, all future moments, they're not guaranteed. You don't know what's going to happen in the next five minutes, or next month, or next week, or... But here, you give yourself an opportunity to meet the new you who's completely innocent because all your sins or wrongdoings or addictions or desires or stuff you've done, they're, they're a part of your past, it's your memory. But if you disconnect from that and you're here, meet yourself. and give yourself a chance to experience the vastness. And outside of my words, and if you even close your eyes and you become calm and quiet, you can examine this for yourself that your body is even not there. When you meditate and you relax, unless you're touching a part of yourself, the body is not even there. It's just an idea that you have a body and it's sensations that you may be feeling but it disappears. Check it out for yourself. You don't have to take my word. Examine it. Hang out in this moment. Hang out in here. Hang out with the, any ideas that you're meditating, you're doing a retreat, you're trying to get anywhere, you're trying to get closer to God or whatever. Put all ideas away for a moment. Or even if you have your eyes open and you're looking at an object, just look at the object without any kind of definitions. Don't define it.
And then you give truly yourself an opportunity to experience the vastness of your own being, the vastness of the presence in a very simple way without doing anything. Because what is it you have to do to be born again and to be renewed? Isn't it refreshing itself at every moment? Isn't every moment of life new, fresh? And what do you have to do for that? You don't have to do anything. You're just showing up. And slowly, slowly, a phenomena starts to reveal itself. It's like a migration, a transformation from the death to life, rebirthing into the new you. And what is the new you? Because you don't want to rebirth into your old self with all of those stuff, do you? So allow yourself to be born into the new paradigm, the fifth dimensional frequency of the being. Simply here and now, simply being. Without an idea. And see what happens. Just being open to possibilities. Simply being open. I don't know. But when I look at my track record, all the way to this moment, I have always been taken care of. Somehow, something has always carried me, has always fed me, taken care of me to this point. And it's been a number of years. Can I use that as a point of reference? If to use anything to come to this moment, and just say to myself, why should I be worried now? 
Can I just relax into now? Since so far I've been taken care of. And then give yourself a chance to see what now has to reveal, to offer. And in that very moment of transformation of the shift of your attention, a seed is planted. A seed has been planted into the consciousness of the vastness of the possibilities. One seed, you have come outside of the individual me that is so concerned about me all the time by shifting your attention into the vastness of now and relaxing into being. And if you are to do a practice, how wonderful and easy this practice is. Doesn't require any jumping jacks. You can do it all the time. What does it require you to do this? You have to spend money. You have to leave your home. You have to go to India. You have to cut your hair. You have to wear Orange, renounce your family. What do you have to do to simply disconnect from an idea and a story and dive into the presence of who you are without a story? Here and now. It's really not that difficult. If you pay attention, it becomes super difficult when you don't pay attention. Because you have to redo it and redo it and redo it.
and it doesn't require any processing. When you do psychotherapy, it requires a lot of processing. You have to continuously going back into the mind, into the past. To the traumas and bring the traumas back out. Relive them to process them. Which is very good for the psychologist and psychotherapist and everybody else. This is good business for them. But it doesn't do anything for you. Because you don't get anywhere. A lot of energy, a lot of time into it, but processing and processing and processing. Why not go beyond that? Why not take the path of least resistance, like the water, where water go, goes down the hill it always takes the path of least resistance, easiest way. Be a lazy spiritual seeker, as lazy as it can be. Just learn to shift your attention and then you don't have to do any work. All you have to do is Pay attention. And that is the most difficult thing to do nowadays in this world because our minds are so distracted. It's running all over. You're going to go to your phone to send a message to your mom or your friend and then you get distracted to Instagram and you see a photo there and then you go to your phone camera and then you forget what you were gonna do. Then you get a message from your girlfriend, hey, come on over, we're having dinner or we're having a birthday party. So the mind is always occupying itself with a lot of different things. And then it suffers. But here, what we're asking to do is instead of doing a lot of do, 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 is shift your attention. And in that shift, from the story into the presence, to the presence of right now, which doesn't require anything. I'm here right now. I don't have an idea of anything. My mind is not going into the past. I'm not going into the future. I am here. And here, right now, it's perfect. Maybe in an hour, it's not. But I don't know that. The only thing I know is right now. And in this shifting into right now, as I get used to the new way of living, that's the rebirth. You are reborn into the new you who actually can be here. 
And that's where you're going to realize that up to now, you weren't really living and you weren't alive. You thought you were, but it was a robot. It was a machine living. It was a program. I have to be a good girl, go to school, I have to obey my parents, I have to get a college degree, I got to get married, I have to have kids, I have to be a good citizen. You're not living. You're fulfilling the expectations of whatever society, religion, family, parents, environment. You haven't lived for yourself because you're dead. You're a machine. Because you're not here until you learn how to be here without an idea. And present, you've never lived. You've been in slavery. And I know, of course, the mind comes and there's people come and want to challenge me and they get very upset because they're very, very attached to the old self and their story and they want to defend it, of course. They want to defend it very strongly with conviction. What do you mean? And I have no intention in convincing anybody because a part of me doesn't care. Yeah, of course, I would, I would love you to become free and experience and join me in the space. But in the same time, I don't have an attachment to it. I don't have an agenda. It's not like I have to, in this life, make you become free. But somehow something moves me, some force puts me in this situation to share the teachings and the wisdom and to transmit it. Somehow it's happening. I don't know why. Every time I think it's going to come to an end, it just renews itself and it happens again. And that's the magic of life. Die to old you and be born into now here with COVID as of our reality, with restrictions as of our reality. You're not restricted and you're not bound. No virus, government rules, nothing can keep you in a prison. You're not in a prison. The physical freedom or not does not define your freedom. Because we've been free running around, roaming around for years and years and being miserable inside. That's not freedom. Freedom is the realization of your vastness in this moment of how vast you are. And that no force, organization, government, disease, virus can ever control or limit, ever. Experience that. Then come to me and tell me you're not free. 
give yourself this opportunity at least one time in this life. And for that, what do you have to pay? I'm not asking you to give me anything. I'm just asking you, give yourself a chance. Dive into this moment. And yes, after that, if you feel the appreciation, yes, help. But first, experience your own vastness. Look and see how vast you are. But for that, as I said earlier, you have to give up something. You have to give up the old you. You have to give up your idea of who you think you are. You have to die into it. And I'm not saying like in this process, as of a moment from now and from after this retreat, you're not going to remember your children. You're not going to remember your family. You're all of a sudden going to be acting differently. No, it can happen, but that's not what I'm saying it's going to happen. It is. You're still working. You're still making money. You're still taking care of yourself. You're still keeping fit. But it comes from a different place. It comes from freedom. Sacrifice anything you have to sacrifice in this life. Whatever that is. I don't care what that is. Anything you have to walk away from. But never sacrifice your freedom. Give away everything you have to give away. Your arm, your eye, your money, your life, your even children, even family, even anything. But never sacrifice awareness for anything. Never compromise being awake for anything. Because that is your asset. That's your birthright. Give away whatever you have to give away. But never ever compromise your awareness. Especially at this time, especially at the time in our era that we're head to head.
consciousness is staring at consciousness. It has become more apparent than ever before. It's like the moment of truth. It's like you can't fool around anymore. It's like, look at me. It's got you by the balls. God has got us by the balls. It's like, dude, wake up. What else do I need to do for you to wake up? I brought you a world pandemic, whether it's real or bullshit, it doesn't matter. I took your freedom away. You're forced to stay home most of the time. What does this mean? It's not really a bad thing. If you're willing to go inward and look at the self and discover the vastness of your being, the more you recognize it, the more you realize this is a blessing because it's forcing you to go inwards. It's forcing you to discover something within yourself that you've been avoiding all of your life. Yet you've been yearning for it. You're dying for it. You want it so bad, yet we're distracted with the other world outside self all the time. So we're not looking inside. And now, existence, God, self, Got you by the balls. It's like no way out. Dig in. Why not using this opportunity? However you have to. Do what you have to do during the day. Whatever is your thing. Without judging yourself. Do what you have to do, whatever that is. But be committed in here and now. be committed into living, living your life without an idea. Innocent, be born into the new you without your stories from the past. Try. If you fail, it's okay. Try it again. It's free. We we try it again. But get into the habit of spending minutes and hours of the day, every day, in being idealist. And then a thought will come into your mind that, oh, I'm really bored, or where am I gonna go and what am I gonna do? Identify that as a thought and come back here in this place that I don't know.
You don't have to know. I don't know. My family asked me or my friends asking me, oh, are you living in Tulum or? I'm like, yeah, it appears to be, but I don't know. I have no idea. I have zero idea of what's gonna happen next month, tomorrow, what's gonna happen in my life. What am I gonna be doing? Where am I gonna be? I, I, I don't know. Before, your mind would go into this projection because you were in this routine under the illusion that it's an illusory, it's an illusion of security, that you're secure, your job secured, your future secured, your family, your country, your status, you can travel. But it was an illusion. And it's still an illusion. And where I'm saying that pay attention is pay attention to the illusion. Consciously bring yourself here and give yourself a chance an opportunity outside of your story to experience the vastness. Meet me in this place. It's amazing. The vastness. I can't explain it to you. It's beyond. I'm not saying that every moment of life, I'm not saying the mind doesn't come. Worry, concerns, fear, pain, stuff like that don't come. They come and go. But they're not having the main stage of life anymore. They just appear and they disappear. Behind it, there is the experience of vastness all the time. It's always vast. It's always here. It's always present. Meet me in this place. And for that, you have to die to your idea of who you think you are. So death comes first. Anybody has any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. You can just unmute yourself. But tell me, um, before this vastness comes maybe emptiness. I, I experience a lot of emptiness when I go into my inside. Okay. It's a kind of, when I don't know what I am, then I feel a kind of big, big space, but it's empty. Okay. And that emptiness, what does it do? It scares you? No, no, no. Not at all. Okay. It's like, no, no, it's like... Uh, 
in a way, it's like a gift where I can put anything in what I want. Like if I have a piece of paper and I, I want to to draw, I can put figures in. It's a, it's a little the same, the, that the space is empty and I can put everything in I want. Okay. Um. Close your eyes for a moment, please. Okay. And just hang out with me. How does it feel? Just being little, right now. It's a little exciting because something could happen, but I don't know what. So right now, as you're just hanging out together, right? In this moment. Yeah. 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 There is a sensation of excitement, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. Okay. So that's what I'm talking about, is you're here without an expectation. You're hanging out in here right now. And then there is a sensation of excitement that something may happen. Yeah. Yeah. Does it make you feel young? <laughs> yes, very much, actually. Yeah. Isn't it <laughs> exciting? Yeah. Right. So this is what I'm talking about is when you learn to be empty and be here, the, these are words when I'm saying vastness or presence. They're words. And then when I say vastness, the mind goes into maybe an infinite field. Or when I say presence, the mind may go into like big kahuna is sitting here, you know. But what I'm referring to is there's a unknowing thing you don't know what's going to happen you're here and there's this excitement of whatever next moment is going to present yeah you understand what i'm saying yeah yeah it's, it's like there's no expectations no no so what happens is you, it's a system that, yeah, we, I'm working with you. I'm going to work with you. Of course, it takes a little bit of time. So you don't need to beat yourself up over it. It takes time to die to a system, a way of thinking. It's a complete structure. You know, it's kind of like it's a economy. It's like a civilization. It's like something of the old, which is dying, which is happening right now, also in the other world. Mm -hmm. The other world is a reflection of what's happening within ourselves. So it's the death of the man that is giving birth to Superman. And what is Superman? 
is that the Superman has the quality of presence of being here and not having an idea of here. So it's always new. It's always refreshes itself. It always reveals itself. And what reveals itself may not be toward your liking. Maybe something happens you don't like. Maybe something happens you like. We're diving into this paradigm from the old ways, not without learning to control. We're unlearning control because we don't want that particular training any longer. That has to die. And it's very apparent because there's nothing in the new paradigm that you can control. No. Anything you're trying to do and manipulate, it falls apart. Examine it for yourself. Every single day in the news, they come, come with a new thing. And you kind of, in your mind, you, you thought you figured it out. Okay, now I'm going to do this. I'll give this shot. And I'll just wear this mask here and there. And, you know, somehow I'm going to control this and doing that. And then it gets shut down. And then you're trying to redo things and re-maneuver and it gets shut down. It's the death of the mind who wanted to control, to give birth to the Superman whose existence is based on not knowing. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Kurt. Thanks for going out. Yeah, exactly. And it's very scary. Of course it's scary. Of course it's frightening. To the mind, not to the master, not to the one who is learn to incorporate and being born into a new paradigm of not knowing that becomes your constitution of living life from the place of not knowing. And you incorporate that, that becomes the very basis. Your building a brand new construction based on not knowing. And then only then you will experience the birth because it's a brand new life coming to earth, to this dimension, whatever this dimension is, it doesn't know. It has no idea. Everything is fresh. But what happens is that Things that mind cannot understand because the mind wants to understand and calculate things and subtract things. But now you're entering the realm of no mind. The realm of no mind. Means entering into the unknown. Every single Sufi, all the mystics, 
throughout the history, all of them, every single mystic from any tribe they came, they dove into the unknown. And when I say this path, it requires paying attention paying attention and in paying attention to this you have to let go and sacrifice of what you used to think your idea of who you are that's scary it's frightening frightening but there is no way if you want to be a mystic and you want to dive into the unknown and become one with the mystery and free yourself from a dying world, a world which is crum crumbling and you want to free yourself from it so you're not crumbling with it, you have to give something up. You also have to die to who you think you were. If you want Superman, if you want to become mighty, if you want to become free and vast and eternal, well, you got to let go of the idea of who you used to be. Because you can't carry this little miserable, needy thing that is always needy and is always afraid and, blah, 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 and is controlling and wants to control this and control relationships and control everything and it's always me, 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 me. You gotta let this dude go. If you want the big prize. That's why I'm saying you have to sacrifice by paying attention. And it's not like you're not doing the work, you're doing the, the work. Because that's why you're here and I'm proud of you. And I recognize it, believe me, I recognize it. Because we've been together, different times we've been together, and you're here now, you're showing up. That's why I'm showing up. I'm showing up because of you. You're the reason I show up. If it wasn't you, I wouldn't be here. Because I don't get motivated. I don't get motivated to teach. My teachings become very limited. I don't feel like putting events. I don't feel like putting anything. All these months I've been here, I don't feel like doing anything. I'm so lazy. But your love and your dedication and your desire to become free brings me forward and makes me want to share I don't know for how much longer. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be doing what I'm doing. This whole endeavor may end after this retreat. To be honest with you, it may not go on anymore. It may go. But let's treat this as the last dance together, if we may, and not take it for granted, okay? And let's go for the truth.
Dive into your own self in here and now. Bring your attention here, avoid and deny and decline whatever your mind is telling you, any stories, whatever is throwing at you, decline it. Even with whatever identity it brings and says, I am this person, I am this, I am that, ignore anything you're hearing in your head and dive into this presence of now, here. And give yourself a chance to discover the truth of who you are, to discover your own vastness of vast. Forget about the words vastness, emptiness. These are words. Dive into your own juice. And I promise you, my brothers, sisters, you will discover that you have a Buddha, a master, an awakened being, a realized being inside yourself right now a fully enlightened master being in your own heart, your own guru, the real guru, your real spiritual teacher is within yourself, is here, it's nowhere else. That's what I discovered within myself and I'm sharing it with you, you are who you are looking for. What you're looking for is nowhere else. It's here in your own heart. But you gotta become present and quiet to recognize it. because it's literally impossible to recognize it if you're busy in your mind chatter and you're busy in your story. You gotta go away from those things. You gotta dive in here, here. Dive into here. And the master shows herself to you. You take one step and the master will go the rest of it for you. You're not alone. You're not here on your own. You're not left out. Don't worry about it. You're not left out, you're not alone. It appears to be, you go to darkness, you go to these different periods that you feel it's really dark and you're left out and there's nobody there and there's no help. That's not true. You're always taken care of. The source, God, runs through everything. God, the creator, consciousness, whatever name you like to put into it, loves you. Loves you. And of course, we all have to go through our darkness. We all go through our stories, ups and downs and feeling abandoned feeling left out, feeling off the course, feeling not worthy or 
going into our addictions and whatever. But keep in mind, in the darkest moment of your life, the light, God, is always there. You are not doing this on your own. You're not alone. Reach out to your angels. Reach out to your guides. They're around you. They're helping you. You wouldn't be here and listening to me if you were on your own. You would be lost. You would be drawn, drowned in the ocean a long time ago. You're not far away from your goal. You're actually very close to the target. If you're here, if we're having this conversation and you're hearing what I'm saying, believe me, trust me, you're not far away. No matter how much inside you may feel like you're off, that is a part of your challenge. That's designed by Her Majesty, the Supreme God, to put you in doubt, to put you in these situations that you feel disconnected, you feel ashamed, you feel lost, you feel not worthy. It's all part of your test. You have to go to these phases. It's a part of your path. to demonstrate that you have, that you're hanging in there. You have to demonstrate that to God, that you're worthy to receive the final real, realization. You have to hang in there and keep going forward. Not only when everything is good, but during the dark. your own darkness, because that's where you're going through. And you see this world outside. It's our darkness. But look through it. It's got no power over you. When you come to your heart, any moment, Remember one thing, it doesn't matter how insignificant you appear to be, your physical body, your looks, or whatever. You're old, you're out of shape, you're da 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 da, you don't have money, or da da da. Don't worry about that. Bring your attention to here, come back to your heart. and feel the love that is here. Not superficial love, not that the love that you're mentally telling yourself it's love, 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 no. Quiet your mind and get away from your mind and come here into the present moment, into the vastness of Her Majesty, the Supreme Lord, Supreme God, here in this moment. Come back into this moment without your story. And look at your heart and look at the love that you have. Look how much love you have. You're full of love. You're just not put maybe exactly in a position in your life to be able to spread it the way you want to. But you have a lot of love.
don't let these thoughts that you're not worthy to clutter your mind and take you, create doubts in you that you're off the path. You're not off the path. You're very close to the target. When you think you have lost it and you're off, whatever it is, whatever addictions you have, that you're lost into your addictions, in that moment, remember one thing, that you're very close to your target. At the moment that you think you're completely lost and far away, use that as a beacon that you're very close. That's a part of your contract. You entered into this dimension with that contract. You are a part of an enlightened race. You come from the land of love. Your entrance into this dimension by itself is an indication that you are carrying the torch of love. By being born, because you have love inside you. Tell me you don't have love inside you. Tell me this. Don't you love? Don't you love your family, your children, your friends? Don't you have love for your animals? Tell me you don't have love. I know you have love. Tremendous amount of love. You haven't found a way of channeling it yet. In the way you think you should. But look how much love you give me. What have I done to be worthy of your love? You give me love all the time. You have love. That's your power. I want you to recognize that. I want you to realize that you do have this love inside you. For that, you don't have to be a spiritual teacher. You don't have to be a guru. You don't have to be a psychologist. You don't have to be a doctor. You're fine where you're at, whatever you're doing. Stay in your heart and stay in that love. First, by loving yourself and not judging yourself for the way you are. That's your number one task. Secondly, know your power. And every time anyone that you touch, people you care for, you like, from any class of the world, 
anything, whether they're working for you, they're are your peers, they're your children, family, friends, in a store, someone is a janitor, whatever it is, exercise that love. Exercise your power. Put your hand on someone's shoulder and say, thank you for your hard work. Somebody's a janitor working cleaning the floors in a university or in a doctor's office or something, just walk up to them and say, thank you for your hard work. You're in a bus, you're leaving the bus, tell the bus driver, walk up to them, look into their eyes and say, thank you for serving. Exercise your power. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to appear significant. Again, you don't have to be a spiritual teacher or a healer or a shaman. The, no, that's an idea. It's bullshit. There's nothing I do, you don't do. None of it is more significant. These are ideas. I don't find myself any spe more special than you or better. But I exercise my power because I recognize it. Exercise your power. That is no one can take it away from you. The pandemic, the government, the new rules, the Illuminati, no one can take that away from you. You see that? You see what you got? Yes, you see it? You recognize that? Are you with me? Are you here? Exercise your power. And your power is love. In however insignificant it may appear to be, don't be fooled by that because the entire thing is being run by God. God is the only thing there is. Never, ever doubt that. Never. God is running through you, running through everything. Come back to that. This is what is meant to be realized now. This is the new race. This is what we want to be born into. We are being born into a new race, a new way of being. Our new way of being is to have God in our life at any moment, every moment, not in a belief way, in an experiential way of experiencing the presence of Her Majesty in every moment of your life without an idea of what's gonna happen next, yet in full trust. That's the birth of the Superman. Kim, you ask a question, my dear sister. You can unmute yourself. Hello, Zara Drusta. Hello. <laughs> you look good. Thank you. I, this is because I have reinvented myself. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> you, know, you shine. Before I teach that, I had to demonstrate it, that the ways of regenerating 
that you can actually rebuild yourself with a brand new body and brand new skin and, and way of being. So I had to demonstrate that before I can offer a workshop. It shows. <laughs> well, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, so my question to you is that at what point in your life did you completely surrender, let go, and trust that the divine will provide when you go into this work full-time, dedicated f to serve humanity? So without any expectation, projection, anticipation, and how you will be provided. So how do you go about trusting and letting go of all these thinking that we have it all planned out, that we have it under control, we know what to expect in the future, you know? So that is my question to you is, how were you able to completely surrender trust and let go? The... Um... This is a wonderful question. I, uh, I've had five near-death experiences and um, um, I don't know if you knew about it or not, or I may have uh, shared it, but the, one of my um, so, somehow, Okay, to be honest with you, the answer is that it never ends. The answer to this question is that it's not that at one particular moment in my life, I realized this and then ever since then, I've been trusting existence 100% every moment of life. If I tell you that, that's a lie. Fear, doubt arises at times. And it it's always puts you in a in a place of a kind of like God wants to keep me honest in a way, because I can stray away. And it's always challenges come. And with those challenges, doubt and fear comes. And there's moments of, oh my God, how are we gonna do this? especially in a financial arena. That's an area that I'm always being challenged financially. As honest as I can be. And there are many times that the entire endeavor appears that it's going to fall apart because I can no longer afford it. Because I put everything I have into this everything, I right? have no savings. I don't save anything. And I pour everything back into it. And it's always on a state of fluke. So it's always a challenge that my baby, my passion, this can fall apart and sink. So there's always like that sense, that feeling there. And, and that keeps me honest in a way, honest, not as far as being honest to people, as far as like keep you intact of forces you to come back to this place because it's always coming back into this place of, huh, what can I lose? It's like, what can I lose? I can lose the image 
of a successful or semi-successful spiritual teacher who's holding his com composure, but that can go down, it could be lost. So it's like, can you, who would I be if that is lost? And it's always like coming back to this place that myself, that which is here, always comes back. But there's always this moment of fear and worry of, oh my God, oh my God, what, what, what's going to happen? It's the mind. And that's what but really keeps me connected with you guys because I can share it and teach it to you because I experience it and I feel it. And it's not coming from a place of being so far away and distant from it of ignorance or being arrogant into, oh, trust, blah, blah, blah. No, I... I experience it because I'm ch I also being challenged, like all of you. The difference is that although my nervous system experiences it, I never buy into it. My freedom is not being compromised whether I maintain this status of being a teacher or financially where I'm at or if I'm homeless. My freedom is not being compromised. I am free. Physically, you may be uncomfortable and you have to compromise, but the internal freedom is not touched. And that is what I wish to share with you. That's, that was deep and profound. And we thank you for being so authentic, open and honest with us. Thank you. You know, like all of you, I have my own desires, wishes, places I like to go to, things I like to reach, like everybody else, no different. I just happen for whatever reason that the source, Her Majesty, for whatever reason, that I don't know if I did anything to earn it, comes through me. But it's not personal. The power that comes through me is not something that I own. It's not mine. So as long as I can financially afford it, I will continue be teaching and sharing, sharing it. 
with all of my brothers, sisters from all over the world. 